How do you know that your hand is your hand? There are two phenomena for how your brain seems to figure this out. The first is agency, which is your brain's understanding that you are the cause of an action. If you intend to clench your hand and you see your hand clenched, you get feedback that you're clenching your hand. You experience a sense of agency over your hand. You might think that this is all there is to your perception of self, but there is actually another phenomenon at play. Your sense of body ownership. And this is arguably more important than your agency over your body parts when figuring out what your body is. This idea is really important with robotics and advanced prosthetics. It'd be good if we can get to a stage where these machines are treated no differently than any other part of our body, when they're supposed to be a part of our body. This concept is also becoming increasingly relevant as virtual reality takes center stage. Our technology is getting better and better, but there are still some key problems that we need to solve. And one of the biggest ones is getting the rest of our bodies into these virtual environments. It's a difficult problem and will definitely require new technology. But we might not be as far away as you think because, as I'm about to try to convince you, your sense of body ownership is an illusion. Think about riding a bike. After some period of learning, it becomes effortless. You can maneuver the bike in any way you want with little thought to it. Even though it requires a lot of body coordination and processing to keep you balanced and to go where you want to go. In a way, the bike becomes an extension of your body. But not many people would claim body ownership over the bike. It's pretty clear where your body ends and the bike begins. But is it possible to incorporate these external objects, whether they are tools, body parts, full body suits, or just virtual body parts floating in air as part of your body? Let's see if we can understand this. First, let's see how far agency alone gets us. If I pick up a cup with my hand, I have a sense of agency over my hand. I understand that I am the cause of its actions. But agency is generalized past your body as well. For instance, we have a sense of agency over the tools we use. If I'm holding a wrench and I start you know, doing something with it, I have agency over the wrench because I understand that I am the cause of its actions. The interesting part is that when you use a tool, it modulates what we call peripersonal space, which is just a fancy term for personal space. This is a region of space surrounding your body. We actually have brain networks that map and encode our peripersonal space. It's used with processing our interactions with the world, like when judging when something is out of reach. If I can reach from a cup, it's within my peripersonal space. But when you use a tool, your peripersonal space is actually extended. We can see this from cell recordings of monkeys. Say that you find a neuron that encodes a portion of the monkey's parapersonal space. When something is within this space, the neuron fires. When you place it on reach, it does not. Now let's say we give the monkey a rake and we teach it to reach for an apple with the rake. When you test the same neuron while the monkey holds the rake, if you place the apple out of arm's reach but within the reach of the rake, the neuron will still fire. The monkey's parapersonal space expanded to fit in the tool. So this is what's happening when you ride a bike, see prosthetic arm, or see your arm in VR. Your peripersonal space should expand around the tool that you have agency for. But this isn't quite what we wanted to know. We wanted to know if it's possible to see a prosthetic as part of your body. We wanted to see body ownership, and agency just isn't getting us there. So how do we get ownership? Your sense of body ownership is your understanding that your hand is your hand, and it's part of your body. Now this might seem redundant to talk about. Of course your hand is your hand, it's your hand. But how does your brain know that? It turns out that the answer isn't that obvious. Let me introduce you to the rubber hand illusion. Pretend that I sit you at a desk. I ask that you put your left arm on the desk and your right arm in a compartment just underneath the desk. I put a cloth over your arm so you can't see it go underneath and at the end of the cloth, on the table, is a rubber hand. Where your right hand would be if it were on the table. I then take two brushes and I start stroking both your real hand and the rubber hand. All you do is watch. It's kind of weird, but eventually something happens while I do this. You actually start to see the fake hand as your own hand. You might imagine that you feel all the details of the brush on the rubber hand, not your real hand. And then when I suddenly take a hammer and smack the rubber hand, you jump. You have a moment of confusion of, oh my God, you just hit my hand. This is a body ownership illusion. We're able to trick your brain into thinking that this object, this fake hand, is your real hand. This is an agency. You haven't exerted any control over the rubber hand, but your brain thinks that this external object is part of your body. So it turns out that our sense of body ownership isn't so concrete. Our brain is actually constantly processing information and making on-the-fly judgments on what and where our body is. 
it's not just your hand either. Experiments have been done with entire body swapping. It's pretty bizarre, but it does have some neat implications for immersive virtual reality. So how does our brain determine body ownership? Well, it combines a whole bunch of information. It uses vision, proprioceptive feedback from your joints and tendons, and tactile feedback from the brush. In fact, you can induce this illusion with only vision alone. No touch at all. Although the touch condition is a lot more powerful. The illusion fails to occur with objects that are not body-like, or body-like objects that are placed in non-anatomically correct positions, like an arm hanging upside down over the table. So what's going on here? Well, body ownership seems to come from comparing the actual information you receive against what you expected to receive. Basically, if it looks like a hand, feels like a hand, and is where you expect your hand to be, it must be your hand. That's where we can fake your brain out so easily by matching expectations with the fake object. It's also a pretty fascinating realization that your brain doesn't just know where your body is. It needs to figure it out on the fly. I wouldn't have expected that. So we have these two things, agency and ownership, and they're completely dissociable from each other. You can have agency without ownership, like when holding a tool. And you can have ownership without agency, which sounds bizarre, but well, here's a reference. But something interesting happens when you have both agency and ownership together. Your sense of agency increases, but not your sense of ownership. In other words, it seems like ownership is used as a strong cue to determine agency over something, but not the other way around. In a way, this makes sense given our evolutionary experience with tool use. We have an expectation that the tool you're using isn't necessarily part of your body. It would make sense that having agency over something would increase your sense of ownership because that often wouldn't be the case. Unfortunately, that means that getting ownership over prosthetic limbs or VR limbs isn't going to be easy. Having greater control over these things doesn't seem like it'll give you stronger ownership. Resulted again, I wasn't expecting. What seems to be most important is matching your brain's expectations. In terms of prosthetics, it means making visually human-like body parts and giving your brain some feedback. A study in 2011 did a rubber hand type experiment with prosthetics and amputees, where the prosthetic had some tactile sensors that gave feedback on the amputee's stump. What came out of this was a stronger illusion of body ownership. In terms of prosthetics, giving your brain tactile feedback from the new arm seems to be the best way to get complete body ownership. The question I'm left with is if this limit of expectations can be changed and expanded over time through learning. If the visual, tactile, and proprioceptive expectations can be loosened and changed, it's possible that we could eventually see body ownership over non-body part-like objects. Going back to VR, I honestly believe body ownership is the big leap that we need to make. Complete immersion in the virtual reality required to believe that the body you occupy in VR space is actually your body. That's going to require giving your brain as much bloody information as possible. You need to get the whole body in there, so have it naturally move with your legs and arms. If I stretch my hand out and look down, I need to see my arm extend and my hand reach out naturally, or else the illusion will be broken and I won't connect. That's going off just vision alone, but there is more you can do to help strengthen this connection. If you have realistic tactile feedback, that might make up for not getting the details 100% perfect. 